Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members of Al-Qaeda. He has also given aid, comfort, and sanctuary to terrorists, including Al-Qaeda members. All options are on the table. My good friend, uh, Senator Obama, that's a very provocative statement. Uh, you previously said that all options are on the table with respect to Iran. And I think that it's important for people to reflect on the real meaning of that, that you're setting the stage for another war. Iran is a, an adversary. Their pursuit of nuclear weapons poses a grave threat to us. Uh, if Iran had a nuclear weapon, it would be a dangerous threat to us. have no doubt uh, Iran possessing nuclear weapons will be a major threat to us. Iran was a threat. Iran is a serious threat if it gets nuclear weapons. Iran is a threat. We all know that Iran poses a threat. And we want, Iran will continue to be a threat. Iran uh, is a grave threat. Major threat to us and to the region. I understand that, but they're in the process of developing it. And will keep trying to develop nuclear weapons. But they're in the process of developing it. And I don't think that's disputed by any expert. They are the largest state sponsor of terrorism. The state sponsor of terror. State sponsor of terrorism. It, it is uh, disputed Hezbollah by uh, and Hamas. The enemies that we're going to have to fight is not just terrorists, it's not just Hezbollah, it's not just Hamas. They are the largest state sponsor of terrorism. It, it is uh, disputed Hezbollah by uh, and Hamas. The enemies that we're going to have to fight is not just terrorists, it's not just Hezbollah, it's not just Hamas. The enemies that we're going to have to fight is not just terrorists, it's not just Hezbollah, it's not just Hamas. The enemies that we're going to have to fight is not just terrorists, it's not just Hezbollah, it's not just Hamas. Ending our nukes. Who the hell are we going to nuke? Senator. Tell me, Barack, who, who, Barack, who's, I'm not who are you to wanting to nuke? Any, I'm not planning to nuke anybody right now. It's uh, disputed Hezbollah by, uh, and Hamas. It is and, disputed. And there is no contradiction, Dennis. It is between, disputed. Let, let me finish. Uh, if we have nuclear proliferators around the world, uh, that potentially can place a nuclear weapon into the hands of terrorists. Secretly and without fingerprints, he could provide one of his hidden weapons to terrorists. He's President Bush's ninth cousin once removed. Cheney's cousin Barack Obama is also Bush's 11th cousin. Discovered is that Dick and Barack Obama are eighth cousins. What? Is that an amazing thing? That old Beach Boy song, Obama Ran. <laughs> When I search John McCain on YouTube, the biggest thing that comes up is you singing Bom 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 Iran. 744,000 hits in case you haven't checked it recently. Are you proud or embarrassed of that? I'm proud. They would establish a theocracy on this earth. If you think you're going to engage the United States military, then be prepared that the next thing you see will be the gates of hell. Let us never kid ourselves. We are in a world war. The year is 1917, and Representative Oscar Calloway enters a disturbing statement into the U.S. congressional record. The statement reveals why J.P. Morgan interests hired 12 high-ranking news managers. They were to figure out how many news organizations it would take to control generally the policy of the daily press of the United States. An agreement was reached. The policy of the papers was bought and an editor was placed at each paper to ensure that all published information was in keeping with the new policy. Soon, that policy would be defined by a front group formed by J.P. Morgan and his colleagues, the Council on Foreign Relations. Today, the CFR maintains that its goal is to increase America's understanding of the world. For two years, Professor Carol Quigley is allowed to examine the confidential papers and secret records of this network. Quigley reveals that these men aim to create a world system of financial control in private hands, able to dominate the political system of each country and the economy of the world as a whole. In short, they seek total and quiet control of the entire world and the CFR is their most visible conduit for carrying out that agenda. CFR members include America's wealthiest tycoons 
as well as the highly placed elite in government, academic institutions, tax-exempt foundations, and the establishment media. Ruling Class Journalists, written by Richard Harwood, describes the CFR membership as the ruling establishment in the United States. The Washington Post article boasted that news reporters who are CFR members do not merely analyze and interpret foreign policy for the United States, they help make it. Who are these policy makers? Many of their faces are familiar. NBC's Tom Brokaw, CBS's Dan Rather, ABC's Barbara Walters, Jim Lehrer of PBS, William F. Buckley of National Review, media mogul Rupert Murdoch, owner of the giant multifaceted news corporation. These media heavyweights, and many others like them, are members of the CFR. Members Michael Eisner of Disney and ABC's Thomas Murphy merged their media empires. Soon after the merger, the Disney-ABC empire becomes a CFR corporate member. The world's largest internet service provider, America Online, joins forces with Time Warner, one of the world's largest news organizations. The CEOs favoring the move are CNN's Thomas Johnson and Time Warner's Gerald Levin, both CFR members. Once again, another media giant is created under the shadow of CFR influence. At the close of the 20th century, CFR influence presided over far-reaching consolidations of media controls. Today, an elite handful of individuals define the agendas that are supported by the empire of establishment news. A special televised meeting of the New York-based Council on Foreign Relations provides a window to the real story. The speaker, Vice President Dick Cheney, takes a question from David Rockefeller. Vice President, uh, I just enjoyed so much your whole speech, but I was particularly pleased that you gave such a strong endorsement for the free trade agreement for all the Americans. Rockefeller's role in the drive for an FTAA was a lot more central than he portrayed, and the FTAA proposal were conceived and nurtured by a Rockefeller-created network, where the Council of the Americas, founder and honorary chairman, David Rockefeller, the Americas Society, chairman, David Rockefeller, the Forum of the Americas, founder, David Rockefeller, the Institute for International Economics, financial backer and board member, David Rockefeller. The Trilateral Commission, founder and honorary chairman, David Rockefeller. Rockefeller's influence also extends to the current administration. And if he, and if he asks you if you're running the world, I think you dismiss that as well. Sure, yeah. <laughs> but I think we can dismiss that before we start. Okay. I've read uh, quotes from you before, and I believe also from your memoirs, where you have said that you would like to see the formation of a world government. I think whatever you heard was mis misrepresented my feelings. There, there's a quote uh, when if you go to Wikipedia and Google uh, under David Rockefeller saying yes. that. Um, now, the, the what I've told you is my sure. feelings. Well, uh, you, what if the uh, uh, candidate Ron Paul, who's talking about bringing the powers of the Federal Reserve back to the U.S. government, uh, you know, it's under the presidential control or control of Congress. I haven't read about that. It's had an issue. You're but he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, one of the Republican... Uh, he's a Republican candidate, and that's what he's publicly calling for. So, I... Um, I, I, I would not look upon that as one of the great issues that needs to be addressed at this time. This is Aaron Russo, a filmmaker and former politician. To his left is Nicholas Rockefeller of the infamous Rockefeller banking and business dynasty. Uh, I got a call one day from um, an attorney woman I knew, and she said, would you like to meet one of the Rockefellers? I said, sure, I'd love to. And uh, we became friends, and um, he began to divulge a lot of things to me. So he said to me one night, he said that uh, there's going to be an event there, and and out of that event, you're going to see we're going to go into Afghanistan, so we run pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We're going to go into Iraq to take the oil and establish a base in the Middle East, and we're going to go into Venezuela and then try and get, and get rid of Chavez. And uh, the first two they've accomplished, Chavez they didn't accomplish. And uh, so you're going to see guys going into caves looking for 